For many of us, elevators are a daily part of our lives. There are almost a million of them in the United States, each serving 20,000 people a year. But even if they are a part of our routine, it's hard not to worry about what could happen when you're enclosed in a steel box and suspended tens if not hundreds or thousands of feet in the air. So what should you do on the off chance that your fears are realized? Instinct would probably tell you to bend your knees and brace for impact, but hitting the ground after a free fall would expose you to extreme gravitational force, making it impossible to support your own body weight. According to researchers at MIT, to maximize your chances of surviving an elevator crash, you must lay flat on the floor in the center of the car. This will evenly distribute your body weight and spread the force of impact over the greatest area of your body. But before you run off and start practicing elevator drills, you should know there has only been one recorded incident of a free-falling elevator as a result of a snapped cable. It happened back in 1945, when a B-25 bomber crashed into the Empire State Building. Miraculously, the elevator's only occupant, Betty Lou Oliver, survived the 75-story fall when the crash was softened by the fallen cable that had coiled at the bottom of the shaft. Fatal injuries involving elevators are very rare, and most occur as a result of door malfunctions. People get stuck or fall into empty shafts. More than half the time, the victim is a maintenance or repair worker. According to ConsumerWatch.com, elevators cause 27 deaths on average every year, out of approximately 18 billion passenger trips. That leaves the chance of meeting your end on an elevator at just 0.000000015%. You're 60 times more likely to die on the stairs, and you're 15 times more likely to be injured on an escalator, making the elevator your safest option. Going up?